Welcome back to the Zephyr Wellness YouTube channel. My name is Jake and it's been a while since I've done one of these instructional videos so I figured I would do that today and what I'm teaching today is William Glasser's five basic needs and William Glasser is a pretty big name in our field. He uh, passed away a couple of years back but what he left was a legacy of helping understand motivation for behavior. He developed a, a therapeutic intervention called choice theory and off of that something called reality therapy. And basically what it distills to is almost everything we do has an opportunity to make a choice. And we say almost everything because there are two components that we really don't have control over. One is feeling and the other is physiology. So. Uh, when I teach, I teach about feeling and emotions, and I say that you have a choice over how much and how long you feel something, but you don't necessarily have control over what you feel or whether you feel it. Similarly, with physiology, ah, with physiology um, things that our body does to help regulate itself, we don't have a whole lot of control over that either. So if it's hot, I'm going to sweat. If I'm hungry, my stomach's going to growl, that type of stuff. Um, we don't have a whole lot of choice over that, but virtually everything else comes with a choice. And what he said is that all human behavior comes down to meeting one or more of these five basic needs. We have freedom, fun, power and control, love and belonging, and survival. Survival is defined as that which we need just to survive. So it's air, it's food, it's water. Um, and then uh, love and belonging is pretty self-explanatory. That's joining a group, that's being around people who you, whose company you like. Uh, being in relation with, with one another. Power and control is anything you do to exercise some sort of power or control. This may be uh, something uh, as simple as choosing your food at a meal all the way up to uh, president of a country. Fun is also self-explanatory. Anything you do for fun. There doesn't have to be some deep meaning to uh, whatever it is you choose as long as you, you believe that it's enjoyable and it's not ca causing harm. And then freedom similarly can be uh, expressed as uh, the, just simply the power to choose all the way up to exercising that, that choice or that freedom and um, being autonomous in doing so. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples here and we're going to illustrate how anything we do is set to meet one or more of these basic needs. But the way that we get these needs uh, met is through something called our wants. So if I want a cheeseburger, it's certainly going to meet my survival need. Uh, that's going to help me you know, sustain life and whatnot. It may help me meet my love and belonging need if I'm eating a cheeseburger with friends. The fact that I'm choosing a cheeseburger and not a cheeseless burger uh, definitely fulfills some sense of power and control because I'm the one getting to make that decision. Is it fun? Maybe. I don't know. It depends on my you know affinity for cheeseburgers. And then freedom, I don't know, choosing a cheeseburger may, may be some exercise of freedom so long as I'm the one making the choice as opposed to having the cheeseburger forced upon me by someone else. Say, uh, you know, if you're in a, a residential setting where the menu is chosen for you, say in a dormitory or, or maybe in the military, you may not get a lot of freedom over that choice. So perhaps getting a cheeseburger does fulfill the freedom need. Um, what Glasser says is that these can all be uh, described in a graphic form by a car, an overview of a total behavior car that can explain why we do what we do. I'll get into that in a minute, but what I wanted to explore with you first is the idea that these can all be met on a scale of healthy. We have 100 at the top all the way down to zero at the bottom. If this is the most healthy decision we can make, we uh, could make very unhealthy decisions down here and still meet our needs. Now this it gets a little bit tricky because some people struggle with the concept of meeting needs in an unhealthy way. Well, let me give an example. Let's go back to that cheeseburger for a second. Now, I'm, I'm aware enough that I have a, a privilege of being able to choose more or less what kind of food I want. Um, I have a steady paycheck. Uh, we, we aren't indiscriminate with our spending in my family, but more or less we get to choose what we want to eat. Not everybody in the world gets that choice. And there are some people who are so destitute that they actually end up rooting through other people's leftovers, uh, either in a trash can or, or handouts from the window of a car or something like that. Uh, to, to meet their survival need. That's a pretty unhealthy way of meeting the survival need is to, to eat somebody else's leftovers um, all the way up to maybe a, a filet 
mignon dinner at a steakhouse. So there's definitely varying degrees of healthy and unhealthy. Now how this applies in counseling practice is um, sometimes we will be dealing with a family where a teenager is constantly fighting or arguing and the parents want to know why. Well, why would a teenager choose to fight or argue? What need could that possibly be meeting? And I would put need with an S in parentheses on the end of it because it could be one or more. Does it meet his survival need? Probably not. Does it meet his love and belonging need? Possibly. In a very warped way, if that's the attention he gets and seeks and, and is fulfilled because he gets people to argue back with him, yeah, he's getting that need met. Now, it's probably somewhere down here, whereas a uh, positive love and belonging need might be met up here instead of, say, arguing through uh, compliance and, and obedience. Not that that's a bad thing. Uh, and we're not saying it from a, from a power di differential, saying you know kids must obey their parents. But by and large, parents have been walking the earth a little bit longer and, and through following the parents' instructions so long as they're healthy and, and worthwhile, the children will receive that same love and belonging need simply by complying with their instructions. Hey, please go mow the lawn. Okay, go mow the lawn. Thanks for mowing the lawn. You know, and rub, the, rub their head and give them a big hug and maybe give them a, a milkshake or something. As opposed to arguing about mowing the lawn, which still meets the love and belonging need because, hey, I've got my dad's attention now, except it's meeting it down here. Power and control can absolutely be met through argumentation because you're getting the person to feed back. What we talk to parents about sometimes is don't worry about getting into a power struggle with your kid. If your kid doesn't want to follow the, the instructions that you gave them, whether it be homework or, or lawn mowing, the natural consequences will flow out of that and the, and the child will eventually choose to comply or choose to go a different direction. But it definitely meets the power and control need, just in a poor way. Fun, I don't know if it could be argued that arguing is fun, but um, some people may, may take some joy in argumentation. Certainly people who debate for a living, uh, talking heads on news channels could find arguing fun, but probably not in this situation. And then freedom. I guess there's, there's a, a, an unhealthy uh, way of meeting that freedom need by continuing to argue with one's own parents. It's just probably not the, the best strategy for, for getting it met, or at least getting your wants met. Because we presume that the, that the child doing the arguing has some want that he needs to get met and uh, is going about it in entirely the wrong way. So the, this, this lens of, of what need are you fulfilling by whatever behavior you're exhibiting is very, very useful in trying to explain how people are doing what they're doing or why they're doing what they're doing. A lot of times behavior seems very mysterious to us until we distill it into one of these needs and then put it on a scale. Just because it doesn't make sense to me or you as the viewer doesn't mean that it's not working for the individual. Take for example self-harm, drug abuse, addiction, violence. They all meet these needs in some way. Now it may be down here on the scale and there's a much better, healthier, more productive alternative to meet that need, but it, we can't argue that it's not working. It absolutely is working. Otherwise, Glasser says, they wouldn't be doing it. Um, Let's go to the behavior car, because I try to keep these videos short so that everybody's attention doesn't wane. And uh, with apologies for my artistic ability, you'll remember that I'm a therapist and not an artist. I'm gonna draw the best crude looking car that I can. So I got a bumper and some wheels, and then we'll go down the body of the car and we'll put some rear wheels in here and another bumper. And then uh, we'll put maybe a, a windshield here and a rear windshield here. And so what we've got here, we've got a car, and this, this is viewing from the top down. Here's a steering wheel. And what Glasser says is that the rear tires that propel the car are those things that we can't do much about, feeling and physiology. We can sort of control the pace of our heartbeat. If I calm myself down and I mindfully regulate my body systems, I can control my heartbeat. I can ramp it up, I can slow it down, but I can't stop it or start it. I can't stop or start sweating just on my own, but I can kind of pump the brakes on it. Similarly with feeling, if you've watched the emotional understanding videos, uh, I've taught that feeling can be um, controlled with how much and how long you feel something, but not necessarily whether or not you feel it. Up on the front tires that steer the car, we have thinking, which we absolutely can do something about. This is the prefrontal cortex, is the frontal lobe of our brain, and we can absolutely control what we think, what we believe, and then doing. We absolutely have a choice over what it is that we do. Um, 
forgive the the, uh, the example, but if if I had a gun to my head and somebody said, "Give me your wallet," I still have a choice whether or not I do give the guy my wallet. Some people say, "Well, I didn't have a choice in that situation." You always, always, always have a choice. It's just that sometimes the outcome of the the potential choice is not something that you want to participate in or risk living through or experiencing, but we always have a choice. So we have a choice over thinking and doing, which are the, the front tires, and then the feeling and physiology we have less, of, less control over. The steering wheel can be said to be our wants. What do you want? That steers your car. It drives you to wherever you need to go. And then under the hood are these basic needs. That's the engine. The engine that powers your car are these basic needs. They're the most powerful thing you have. I hope that this makes sense to you. I like teaching this because it helps us break down our what, what my favorite word is, which is intentionality, which I'll try to flash somewhere over my head here in the video. Intentionality simply means why do we do what we do? With what intent are we doing it? With more intent breeds more awareness. More awareness gives us more power and control over what we do and whether or not we do it in a healthy way. By being aware of what it is that we want and what needs we're fulfilling with our wants, we can think and do a little bit more intentionally. And thus, we can elevate our own level of satisfaction in life. If you like this video, um, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, that, uh, that definitely helps drive viewership. And uh, more viewership means that more people get more help uh, for free. And we also invite you to check out the Noggin Notes podcast and the Noggin Notes app and visit ZephyrWellness.org because we just keep putting out content for you to consume. As always, on behalf of my Zephyr Wellness team, I really appreciate you tuning in. I'm Jake Wiskirchen, and I wish you great mental wellness.